Hey everyone, it's Kathy. Welcome back into my craft room and here on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm looking down again. I, I really need to get a riser to put my tablet on so that I'm not looking down when I'm talking to y'all. But I like to come in like we've got Marlene and Margie and Jennifer and Jennifer Real and Connie. Welcome in. I'm so glad y'all are here. Oh wow, I'm so excited about today's card because any crafter is gonna love this card and I'll tell you why. Um, us as crafters, the minute I saw this um, bundle in the new catalog, I had to have it. And thank goodness it was on our pre-order list so I was able to get the bundle. Um, when the annual catalog comes out, we are only allowed to get a few things. Hey Tina, welcome in. Phyllis, good to see you. I, I looked on my phone, Phyllis, just before uh, I went live and I saw your your question, are you going live today? And I was getting ready to text you. In fact, I told Jennifer, I said, oh, I gotta hurry up. I gotta text um, Phyllis and let her know. Phyllis doesn't do Facebook, so she doesn't see my post on Facebook. So I try to remember to go in and tell her that. So anyway, welcome in everybody. I am so glad y'all are here today. I'm excited. Um, I've been on a roll this morning. Not only have I prepared for my live today, but I even recorded my video for tomorrow. I usually have that done ahead of time, but I guess I was running behind this week for whatever reason. Well, we had a death in our family. Um, Jennifer's uh, Aunt Eileen, who is her daddy's sister, um, passed away this week. She was had been on a ventilator. She had a massive stroke, and she never um, bounced back from it. And the doctor said that even if she lived without the ventilator, she would be brain dead. So, um, oh, you don't do Facebook either, Diane. Okay. Um, I don't know how to get notifications out to y'all that don't because the only thing I can tell you can do is ring the bell where right beside the subscribe button and choose all. And then that way, every time that I go live, you should get a uh, notification. But um, anyway, that kind of that kind of threw me this week. I, I was married to to um, Eileen's brother, who is was Jennifer's dad. He has passed since too. Um, he he passed away very young. He was forty nine. But um, Eileen was eighty three, I believe. And Jennifer can correct me if I'm not right. Hey Cynthia, hello, welcome. Um, but anyway, uh, it, anytime you lose a loved one, and that family adopted me. My first husband had eight sisters, and, uh, two, and, and it was two boys and eight girls. Large, large family. And uh, I became adopted in because I didn't have family. So this family became my family. And even now, I'm, um, Steve's been, he's been gone now for... Gosh, he passed away in 02, I believe. About 20, yeah, about 22 years he's been gone. Um, but anyway, this is the first sister that's passed away. So it's been, um, I think it's all, it's taken us all, even though I'm removed from the family because I don't live up there anymore. They're all from uh, Central Virginia. They're originally from North Carolina, but not this far south. They were like in the northeastern part of North Carolina, where I'm in the southwestern part of North Carolina. But anyway, all that being said, please keep the family in your prayers. Um, uh, Eileen had two daughters, and they, bo they both have children. They both have two children, and then their children have children. So um, it's been hard. I am going to do my best. Uh, I'm going to do my level best to try to make it up for the funeral. Um, and so Dennis told me that he, he understands completely because he knows that they are my family. In every sense of the word, they are my family. And I've grieved, um, I've grieved over this loss. But anyway, enough sad stuff. We're here to craft and have fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip y'all down to my, <clears throat> to my craft table. And uh, try not to get too um, choked up here. First thing I want to tell you is, and I, I mentioned this in one of my videos, I got a new mat. Um, I had been uh, kind of thinking about it. I'd been looking at them. And these mats are pricey. But I didn't get the huge one because I didn't have room for it. I got the one that, oops, I'm showing y'all too much. I got the one that is... Um, 
I think it's 18 by 13. It is a glass mat, but it's magnetic. And I thought the magnets came with it, but they did not. So I have ordered the magnets. What's so nice about that? You can put stencils down and put the magnets on it, on your glass mat, and it holds it to it. So I'm looking forward to getting my magnets. This is our new annual catalog. I do not want to show the front of it until we... Um, I knew that some of y'all had it. Now I have a box that are on that is on order. Hey Kathy, Vivian, and Diane. I'm trying to make sure Marsha. Hey Marsha, I'm trying to make sure that I'm catching everybody as they come in. But Jennifer's here. She's going to welcome y'all for me. If I'm not looking there, she will do the welcome for me. So uh, thank you, Jennifer, for being my awesome moderator. And while I'm thinking about this, she has a field trip with Autumn next um, Friday. So she will not be here. So we're going to do our live on Thursday next week. So Thursday, 12 noon, mark your calendar. I will send out a reminder on Facebook, and I will put it on my blog. So if anybody that follows my blog will know that as well. So um, I hadn't seen Marsha on here in a while. I think she pops in every now and then. So good to see you. I hope your husband's doing well. We haven't talked in a while. Marsha, I don't know if you know that my email changed but I'm no longer Kathy at Random Acts of Crafting. It's now Kathy at Random Acts Act of Stamping at gmail.com because I've emailed you and not heard back from you. So I'm thinking you might not have that email. So double check under the video and make sure you have my correct email. Pop me, pop me an email and that way I can reply to it and you'll know, I will know that you got the right one. Hey Brian, welcome in. Anyway, this is our new catalog. I can't open it until May 2nd, and that makes me sad, but that's not my rule. That's Stamping Up's rule, and I am, I'm sad about it. But nevertheless, I'm going to stick, I'm going to tuck it back here where it belongs until we can. I have a PDF for today's project. I didn't do a, um, I did not do a diagram because this card is so simple. It is a sidestep card, but there's a simple way of, doing it. Before we do that, I want to show a card that I got. Randy Esposito sent me this card. In fact, I think it may have came in the mail yesterday, but I didn't. the mail ran extremely late last night. I didn't get back out to the mailbox until earlier. I went out to get my Chewy.com box because I order my dog food from them, and she sent me one of her pinwheel cards with a little button in it. And she knows I've still been struggling. I've been struggling quite a bit ever since COVID, so she sent me a nice little um, get well card to let me know that she was thinking of me. I always love it when I get cards and this is so pretty. She has done so many of these. She has become an expert and I love those. I think they're so pretty. Today we are going to be doing a sidestep card. I'm going to show you my first one I did. This was my first one and I used the sailboat punch and I used the by the bay um, paper and I actually cut the waves myself. I punched out the, I mean, I didn't punch. I die cut the clouds from Give It a Whirl. I think I used the circle punch for my son and just made this a very simple congratulations card. This was more or less a little trial and error type thing, but I liked it, but I wanted to work with this bundle, Crafting With You. I got a lot of the stamps out and the dies are out because believe it or not, look what I did. I feel so, I feel so accomplished. I've got stamps loaded on blocks. I've got ink pads and dimensionals. I've got my paper and my cardstock and my other dies and even my stamping scrub. We're going to be doing so much stamping that I felt like I definitely needed to have this by my side. So I moved Randy's card to the side because I didn't want to make a mess of it. I am going to sit this back out of the way. Um, the, I got this one with, with the pre-order and like I said, I was so glad they offered this because when I saw the catalog, I fell in love with the stamp set. What crafter wouldn't love this? Look at this. It's a little embossing machine and a sewing machine, a basket, and yarn, but the dies go even further, and you're going to, I can't pull them out here because they're not there. They're in my, ba in my basket, so let's do this. Let's get everything out of the basket. My stamps have probably stuck together. Some of them have. Yep, some of them definitely have. I'm going to set these over here. Oh, okay, we can pick this one back up on this one. What happened, I, they had 
but they had stuck on my um, on my mat. I mean, on my stamp. Um, duh. I'll get it out in a minute. My stamp blocks. <laughs> anyway, here's the inks we're going to use. I'm only using one ink that is a new color, and that's the pecan pie. It's such a pretty shade of brown, and I'm doing the basket in it because I thought the basket just needed to be brown. Uh, I got a sweet sorbet, a crumb cake, and a balmy blue. All right, let's, and I, I got an extra stamp block just for good measure, and I'm using a basic white cardstock. Let's see, yeah, basic white, and this is a whole sheet of paper, and I cut it in half. You know, it was It was like this. So it was an eight and a half by 11. I sliced it on the 11 inch side at five and a half. That gives us two. I'm gonna hang on to that white piece because we're gonna be using it as well. Um, I've got my um, my scalloped contour dies too because we're gonna cut a window. I got some Stampin' Dimensionals, both mini and big ones. Here is what I want y'all to see is these dies. The ones that, oh, I dropped one on Bella. <laughs> Oh no, I got it. She's right here under my feet, y'all, so you might hear her snoring before it's all said and done. These are the ones that I'm, we're gonna stamp the item, but look at the ones we're not gonna stamp, that we're gonna actually die cut. Look at this. Does anybody know what that is? Does anybody know what that is? <laughs> it's our trimmer. I think it's so cute. Let me show you the card that I did, and I did this one in Sweet Sorbet. This is our sidestep card, and th when I said it's an easy sidestep, do you remember we had to cut it, and we had to cut down the side to so many score lines, and we had to skip score lines, and all of that? You remember how difficult that was? Well, this is a newfangled way of doing it, where you can get the same effect, but make it so stinking easy. So, I think y'all are going to love this, and isn't that adorable? I flipped for this. I've got a ruler and a and a, a, a stamp and cut. Well, the stamp and cut the the trimmer. That's what I'm trying to say. It's this. So, <laughs> um, and the sewing machine and a pair of scissors. And we've got the um, uh, the basket with our little yarn in it. But this sent me right here. My little stamp and cut. This reminds me of the big one. I guess it could be the little one. But who doesn't love their stamp and cut and emboss machine? All right, I'm going to stop yakking and see if I can get started crafting. How about that? The first thing I want to do is we're going to stamp our images first. So I'm going to get, I am going to bring up, which one is my stamping? This is my stamping pad. I'm going to bring this up because these are photopolymer stamps. So we're going to do some stamping first. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stamp our little die cut machine. So on my original card, I, I did it in boho blue because, you know, they got the little one that's in boho blue. But I'm going to do it different today. I'm going to do it in blue, but I'm going to do it in balmy blue. Or do I want to do it? No, I'm not. I've changed my mind. I'm going to do it in... Jennifer, I'm, I'm throwing you for a loop because I'm pulling in another ink. The Moody Mauve. This is, a, this is one of our new ink colors. Isn't that pretty? I love that. It reminds me of the 70s. The boho blue and this reminds me of the colors from the 70s. 80, early 80s, I think. Yeah, early 80s. You know when we all had the blue country curtains and with the ruffles and ducks everywhere in our house? I know I did. I was duck crazy. You can ask Jennifer if you don't believe me. <laughs> she, she, will, she will definitely concur to that. I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper because I'm going to stamp off. The reason I say that, when you get a new ink pad, they are so super juicy that if you don't stamp off, you're going to have a glob. See what I mean? So now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to stamp that down. And it doesn't give you that glob of ink that we got the first go round. So that worked out good for that one. Let me open my stamp and scrub over here so we can... Um, put these ink pads on here. I'm going to set my paper over there because I don't need it yet. And I'm just going to give these a quick little scrub as I use them. I'm going to come in now with the... Um, what color am I going to use? 
I want to do the sewing machine. So I'm going to do crumb cake. I'm going to do it the same color I did for the other one. Now these are not as juicy, so I don't think I'll have to stamp off. This is an older ink pad. Probably needs inking. But I'm going to stamp it right here. And the dies also have spools of thread. They have buttons. I mean, it is it is a crafter's uh, dream set of dies and stamps. I have fallen in love with this set. All right, I want to do the basket, but I'm going to do it in pumpkin pie because I want it to be a little darker than crumb cake to look like a little wicker basket. So let's get that pecan pie out. Mm, I love pecan pie. I could use a slice of that right now. Okay, we're going to do that full strength. Right there. Isn't that pretty? I think it's such a nice, rich color. And we're going to close that up. And I want to do my... I think I'm going to do my yarn in the red, Sweet Sorbet. I did it before in, in the Azure, Azure Afternoon, or however you say it. I've heard different people pronounce it different ways. I'm thinking I might want to stamp off on this. I don't know. That stamped pretty good. Let's try that. You know, if it don't work, we'll just skip it and go to another. We'll do it again. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at those. I love these stamps because they. I think they call this set a distinctive because it looks... Um, see how the colors kind of give you that washed look? I love that. I think they're so pretty. So, clean that off. We know how red ink likes to um, make a mess of things. Now, when I did this card the first time, my ruler that I cut out of um, crushed curry, it needed to be thicker, so I'm going to cut it twice this time and, and glue them together to give it a little bit more stability, because you see how that's kind of floppy, and I don't want it to be floppy. So let's put our stamp pad. No, I need to stamp one more thing. I need to do the sentiment. And we're going to do that in balmy blue. Sending you a handmade hug. I think I want to do it in blue. I'm not sure. You know what? Let me clean that off a minute because when I was stamping, I've got ink all over everything. I've got it all over my stamp block, um, and I don't like to do that, so let's clean that up just a little bit. And all I did was wiped it with a cloth. I just wanted to make sure I got all the stamp cleaner off of it. And I'm going to just kiss my ink pad this time. Sometimes we can be a little too zealous in our ink. And let's see how this looks. That's not bad. I can live with that. All right. I'm going to close my... Well, why is this one? This one's not a new one. It shouldn't be hard to open and close. <laughs> if y'all saw the video I did the other day and I showed y'all putting the chapstick on the, um, the side of your new inks, I, I forget sometimes when I get a new ink to do that. I'm bringing this all the way over so I got room on the other side to go back, run that back through again. So let's do this. Let's lay this right up here. And let's um, grab our die cut machine. And I'm going to have to bring the big boy out because i got that big piece that I want to run through all at one time. I'll tell you what, let's put our dies on it first. Let's put our dies on everything first. So I'm going to grab my little stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let me bring my little my little flags over here that I like to put these down with so they don't move on me. Rule of thumb when you're putting your dies, lining your dies up, you don't want to see any white inside of your die itself. So I'm going to put that right there. Let's get our sewing machine. And that looks pretty good. A little bit over. Huh? 
these things suction to your desk and when you pull them they don't move and they really work good on this glass mat I'm telling you everything works good on this glass mat I don't know what took me so long to finally give in and order one but it is such a lifesaver um, this I don't know if any of you it's, I know some of you do watch May May and this is the same glass mat that she uses and she promotes um, I didn't order it from her because she don't sell them uh, but she did have a coupon code that I could use but I actually found one that gave me 20% off rather than the 15 that her her um, code would have offered me so I got 20 almost $20 off of this so that was a good that was a good deal all right we're gonna put that one down there now you see this one I stamped it up high because I knew that I wanted to put this one right about here I'll bring that down because I want that embossing machine to fit right there. So I want that to be nice and straight, nice and straight as we can get it. And I'm going to use another one of these and I'm just going to put it one here and maybe one right there. I just want to make sure everything is well um, tucked down so we don't lose anything. My basket over here. And my hugs, sending you a hug, sending you a handmade hug. That's even better, isn't it? All right, here comes our big boy. So we're going to pull him up here. I might have, I don't know, I think, I, I think we're okay. I'm going to set that right there. I don't want it to fall in my stamping scrub over here. And I got it open, and I don't have room to close it because I got so much stuff on my desk. You know, no matter how much room I have, I still don't have enough. It's sort of like my kitchen cabinets. I, my kitchen, I have a massive kitchen with lots and lots of cabinets, but I still never feel like I have enough cabinets or enough uh, countertop. And, and that's crazy. It's like the more you have, the more you use. So, here we go. Now, these are going to crack and pop a little bit because they're going against the grain, but that's okay. I'm going to turn that around a little bit and let it pop out that last time. Oh, I'm going to need it again. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this off and sit it down. Everything stayed on it, so that's, that's a good thing. Except that one little piece right there. And what I'm going to do now, let's open it back up. And I'm going to set my plate in. And all of these little pieces that I have, I'm going to just lay them onto my mat. My scissors, my ruler, and this right here. We're going to cut this one twice. We're going to cut it again with white. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So let's lay this on top and crank it through. Yes, um, Vivian, it is similar, but you know, I put them side by side, and there, there is a difference in the tone of the two colors, and I can show you, um, I can show you the difference. Let me, let me pull my cup, my cinnamon cider, and you, you'll see the difference. Um, I pulled all my old inks, and I got them sitting over here. There is cinnamon cider. And here is pumpkin pie. This has more of a red tone to it, and this has more of a brown tone. When you know you think they they're similar, or you think they might be the same until you put them side by side. And the card stock's the same way. And I, of course, my cinnamon cider I have stored over here. I store my ink pads and my re, my reinkers and any card stock that retires because you never know when it's going to come back, especially your ink colors. So, um, but that's that's the difference. Did that help? Hey, Carmina and Sherry. I'm, I'm missing a lot of people. Jennifer, a April. Hey, apes. April. 
Oh, okay. Jennifer told me that she's been welcoming people in herself because that's what I told her to do. And I did, didn't I? I did tell her to do that. I'm going to pull all of my little pieces that cut out off. We're going to go back because I'm going to cut. Do you see what, what it cuts to with the trimmer? So be careful if you get this set. Don't lose that. That's your little slider that goes up and down. So we're going to cut it again in white. And I'm going to get a scrap of white. Okay, there's a scrap. And let's put our little trimmer here again and I'm going to move my ruler and I'm going to cut this again because like I said I really want to reinforce that ruler so uh, for any of you that don't know who April is April is Jen she's my adopted daughter and Jennifer's best friend <laughs> actually Jennifer's best friend and my adopted daughter so um The new ink pads, um, the any of the new ink pads, I know they're hard, but sometimes you just have to pull them. But once you get them moving, you can actually put your fingers up to the top and press like that, and they'll pop right open. you got to get both thumb and forefinger up to the top, just like that, and press, and then it will pop right open. Um, the other thing you want to do, once you get them open, they're hard to slide. They're very hard to slide. If you'll slide them out and take an old chapstick, we all got old chapsticks that we bought that we didn't really didn't like. Um, take your chapstick and just run it very, very gently. You don't want to put gobs of it on there. But on this track, just coat it a little bit like that. Just like that. And then your ink pad, and then work it back and forth into that track. And it lubricates that plastic so it makes it just super, super easy to open and shut. And then, like I said, to, uh, if you have trouble opening your inks, just bring it up like that and squeeze it, and it will pop right open. So I hope that little tidbit helped. Let me put cinnamon cider back over here before I accidentally use it. All right, I've got my pieces back down. Let's get my chopstick out of the way. I bought this um, O'Keeffe's um, Lip Repair because I love their... Um, hand working hands and the working feet I use those a lot and I thought I was gonna love the um, the chapstick but I didn't I found that it dried my lips out more than it helped so let's bring the big boy up again and we're gonna run these through Oh, Marsha, Jennifer has Jennifer might need to email you and talk to you about that. She's had issues with her school, so she'll get back with you on that, or I will, and let you know what's going on. So we're hoping too that she'll be able to get that going pretty soon, if that's what's in the in the cards for her. So, did I miss anybody that came in? I was hoping that um. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Thank you. I'm going to glue these two together because I just want to give that ruler a little bit more stability. And here is my little second trimmer, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. I think, I think it makes it so much better. So I'm going to lay all of my dies back over here. I'm just going to drop them in there for right now. And then I can clean everything up after we finish. But uh, this this card is just so stinking cute. You're going to love it. Once we get going and get, I'll show you how easy it is to do this. You're going to be making sidestep cards left and right because it is just that easy. So I'm going to lay that up there. That's our sentiment. Um, let's lay that guy over here. Look at that stinking cute little sewing machine. Is that not adorable? This is why I love stamping and crafting and card making because I just love seeing something come together like this. It just is something that releases your creativity and it it's a stress reliever for me. Um, if I'm stressed, I'm crafting. Well, I'm crafting even when I'm not stressed, but that's beside the point. 
<laughs> I just love doing it. Y'all know that about me. All right, let's get all of these dies out of our way and get our get this plate out of our way. And that can go in there. That can go in the trash. I'm going to put this over here. Now, the other thing we need is that other half a sheet of white cardstock. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. We're going to do some scoring, y'all. And I think for this, I'm going to lay all of these little die cut pieces right up here and set a block on it so they don't go nowhere. I'm going to bring my trimmer back out. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not going to bring my trimmer out. I'm going to grab my scoreboard. I'm going to bring out my big boy because we're going to be doing multiple scorings across the top. I thought it would be easier for y'all to see uh, me using the Simply Scored scoring tool rather than the trimmer. Um, I got my score lines up here so I could remember what they are. So we're going to start, we're going to score at two and one eighth. So two, and it's the first little dot after the two, two and one eighth. Then we're going to score at four and a quarter. That's the second dot after the four. Then we're going to score at five and a half. And then we're going to score at six and three fourths. And then we're going to score at seven and three eighths. So one, two, three. That would be three eighths right before the half. Four eighths is a half. Three eighths is the one dot before it. So this is all the scoring you have to do, other than we do need one more piece of cardstock. And I'm going to get Bonnie Blue because I'm going to use, yeah, I think I'm going to do Balmy Blue. And, oh, do I have a piece? I might have to get up and grab a piece. I thought I had everything I needed. Look at me. Y'all know I'm always an uh, uh, accident waiting to happen. Bella, you got to move, honey bunny. I can't move my feet. I can't even get up because I've got dogs all around me. <laughs> okay, Balmy Blue. I didn't have a scrap big enough to cut this off of. So I had to hop up real quick and get this. I hope you don't mind. Uh, we're going to lay that piece up there. We're going to cut a piece off of this. And what I suggest doing is cut it, put your 11 inch piece at the top and cut this at two and a half. And it needs to be two and a half by eight and a half. This way you only have to cut once because it's already eight and a half inches this way. So two and a half inches. And then we're going to turn it. And, and this is why I love this uh, trimmer. The only reason I didn't do it with the other one, I wanted y'all to see all of the score lines. We're going to turn this around and we're going to score it at um, four and a quarter. Because it's eight and a half and half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So we're going to score right there. And then I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to score it at a half an inch on one end. It doesn't matter either end. Just bring it to a half an inch and give it another little score. And that is going to be your second part of your step card. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some folding on this. And this is going to be, it, it's very simple. It's mountain. So that looks like a mountain and then a valley. So that score line goes down like a valley. This one's going to come up like a mountain. And then that one's going to go down like a valley. And then this one's going to come up like a mountain. So mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain. So bring it all together like that and take your bone folder and give it a good crisp score or burnish. We already scored it. So then I'm going to come back here in the back and I'm just going to re- Enforce those score lines just like that and like that. Now we're ready to put on some decorative paper. That's where our Country Gingham, I think it's called Country Gingham. Yes, Country Gingham Designer Series paper. And I'm going to choose this gingham like this. I, choose, I chose a different one for this one. I did the red, uh, the sweet sorbet, and the larger check. This one I, I decided to use the smaller check in the um, balmy blue. Another thing that Stampin' Up! offers that I, I don't know any other company that does is the, the matching of your cardstock to your designer series paper. You always have um, good matches. Your inks match, your, your cardstock matches, your designer series paper matches. Everything matches so well. 
All right, so this is gonna go on like that. So that folded piece is gonna go to your back, but we're gonna do our designer series paper first so we can put in on our little steps where we want that to go. So, and if you notice, the one that I did with the sailboats, I brought the, the waves all the way across because I knew I wanted a sailboat here. But on this one, I didn't. I brought the car, this little uh, side card to the front because I wanted to have that length to have everything on it like I wanted it. So it's your, it's your design once you make it. You can change it up any which way you want. All right, bring my trimmer out again because we have some more cutting to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to five and a quarter. The reason I'm going to do that because everything else is going to be five and a quarter off of this piece. So I'm going to put my score blade up and I'm going to come up with my cut blade and cut that off. Now we have a piece that's five and a quarter. So I'm going to turn it around this way and then we're going to cut our strips. We need one that's one and, oh, let's go this way, one and three fourths. So one and three fourths is right there. And I, anybody that has problems reading your ruler, I do have a video that breaks down a one inch into your um, eighths and everything. So if you struggle with that, take a look at that video. Now this one's gonna be seven eighths and seven eighths is gonna be right here. I know where my eighths are because that's gonna be the, the in-between marks. That's an eighth, that's an eighth, that's an eighth. That's an eighth. So seven eighths is going to be right there, one line up from the one. So seven eighths is, is an eighth away from being an inch, if that makes any sense. It doesn't unless you craft and you know your measurements. Okay, there's that piece. Now we need one that's three quarters of an inch. So that's easy. That's just right there. So I'm going to hold that down and cut that up. And now we have all of our panels we need to go on the front of our our steps and these are our steps these are our steps all the way up so the first piece is going to go back here and it helps if you just you know push this out and then you can center this in just like you want it or if you want to you could bring it up a little higher like that so you can see more of it because you're not going to see what's down there in that valley so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some stamp and seal because this is not messy and it dries quick um, or doesn't, you, there is no dry time. So I'm going to put some stamp and seal here, here, and here. And remember it goes on, not the first one, but the second one. I'm going to turn it this way so I can get it nice and straight on here. And y'all know me, the only time I get quiet is when I'm gluing paper down. That's because I can't walk and chew gum. Now we're going to skip this one and come down to this one. So again, I'm going to put a strip of adhesive. And we're going to go right in here. I love this gingham paper. It looks, it just looks so pretty put that down and now we got this last little strip and I think one strip of stamp and seal right down the middle will be suffice and that one's gonna go right here now this one I am gonna center up top and bottom because this one is, is gonna be more visible I left a little bit more to the bottom but that's okay there is our decorative panels now so there is our step card, and look how easy it's going to be to put this together. All we're going to do is glue this onto here, lining it up to the edge, and then we're going to glue this piece on back here, just like that. And then when that folds together, there's your side step. How simple is that? Oh, the Teflon Bone Folder. Stampin' Up! doesn't carry these. I wish they did. I ordered mine from Edith Ray ages ago. Uh, you can go, you can actually, you can order it from an individual um, YouTuber or you can get it, yeah, Kathy, you can, hey Kathy, I was looking for you earlier, you can get them on Amazon. And this is the Dress My Craft um, Teflon Bone Folder, but I did take the, the label off of it. So I, lo I love the Teflon Bone Folder. Stampin' Up! has a bone folder 
they have one like this. I even have mine with my name on it. Uh, and you can see I've used it quite a bit. And it is a nice bone folder, but it's not a Teflon one. So I find myself reaching for my Teflon one more than I do any other. So, all right, so what's next? What we wanna do next is pull our pieces over. What did I do with that piece? Here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on here. Something like that, and I think I'm gonna use liquid glue for this. I know y'all said you like to watch me make a card from beginning to end. Well, today you are definitely watching me make it from beginning to end. So, I hope that you are enjoying this. Hey, Cynthia. I'm seeing so many new people. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. I'm not seeing any thumbs up right now, but then my end might need to be refreshed. But please give me a thumbs up. Oh, okay, Jennifer said I got 18 thumbs up. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And even after the video's over, if you go back to the video and leave me a comment, that helps my channel too. Um, it's amazing how the, the uh, stamping up, not the stamping up, the YouTube police really watch everything and they love it when other people like your videos because they, they say, oh, we need to push this one out there for more people to see because people are loving that. So comments and likes and all of that helps grow my channel. And that in, in turn helps me. Hopefully, hopefully that helps me get more customers because, you know, I, I do this for my livelihood as well as it being a fun thing to do. Um, I, I'm waiting for my husband to tell me that I can't do this because I'm not making money. But um, I was at one point. And then I lost, some, I lost some of my girls that could no longer stay with me. And then I started losing customers because the economy tanked. But um, I'm hoping that that's, we're gonna see a turnaround. I put Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this and I'm just gonna sit it down right about here. Just like that. I wanted that popped up because it just, it needed it. Now we're gonna come over here. The next thing I wanna do is I want to work on the trimmer. So let me get my little, oh, did I lose my, I told y'all not to lose it when you cut it, and guess what, I've lost mine, my little gray slider. I got, oh, here it is, it's, it's been flipped off the side of my craft mat, but I found it, there it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper snips, and I am going to come in here, and I'm going to cut out this portion along that line, and around there and here so I can glue it on here to make it look more like the trimmer that we have. So I'm gonna cut that off right there and then I'm gonna come in and cut it off right there and then I'm gonna follow this score line around here Just like that. And now when we glue this down on here, oops, I didn't get all the score line and it shows when you lay it on your piece. That looks pretty good there, this one doesn't. Alrighty, we're gonna put that down just like that. Before I put it down, I'm going to put it on my silicone craft sheet only because I don't want it to move. And I'm going to bring a ruler. I think, well, I'm going to just use my regular ruler. I want to put some lines in it to make it look like our trimmer. And I'm just going to use pencil for this. You don't have to be exact. But I just thought some pencil lines in there. Where's my mechanical pencil? I like my mechanical pencil better, but I guess I'll have to use a regular pencil because I don't see it up there. It's probably back there behind some of my other things. But just run some lines, move it back just about a sixteenth. And I'm not measuring, so don't let sixteenth scare you. Move it back. And you just want those lines like on our trimmer. 
and you don't have to put them all the way across. I didn't on the first card. I got tired of drawing lines and I stopped. But if you do that, it gives you the look of your grid paper on or your grid lines on your trimmer. I didn't do them across. I just did them long. Just like that. Something like that. And they don't have to be perfect. Just something to give it a little bit of detail. All right, I'm going to take my glue, and I'm going to put glue on the back of this. You know, um, the details that we put in our cards is what makes them so special. So I think when you take time to do little things like this can make a difference in the way your cards look. Okay, so now we have our little slider, and I want to put it up here. It even has the little registration mark. So I'm going to actually put that down with a glue dot, and I'll tell you why. Because it's so teeny and it needs to go right there on that line that I'm afraid if I do it with something else, it's not going to um, show. I mean, it's not going to, the glue will seep through and get on everything else. Whereas the glue dot should hold it. And I just rolled one up off of my finger. I'll actually roll it a little bit more because I want it to go right there, just like that. And then I'm going to lay that down just like that and give it a press. There we go. There's our trimmer. So I'm going to do this one the same way I did the other one. I'm going to set the trimmer right about here. And I'm going to put glue on the back of it and just place it where I want it. I didn't need glue up there. I need a glue down here. That's okay, it will dry. So I'm gonna bring this over to about here and press it down. Notice I pressed it on that silicone craft sheet. It's not gonna to stick to that. So that way we can wipe that glue off. Let me get a little alcohol wipe over here. If any of you that haven't been watching me for a while, I buy these Equate uh, wipes and I take a bottle of regular alcohol and pour in them and I use those for everything. I wipe the glue off my fingers. I um, clean off my mat, my tools, I clean my cell phone with them, <laughs> I clean everything with those because they work. They just work really well. You know, when something works, don't fix it, use it. So there's the glue on my ruler. And let's see, make sure I got it going in the right direction. Yep. So I'm just going to lay this one, I'm going to lay it like that so it'll be both sides showing on both sides of the card because it is going to be sticking up. There we go. So now we can put this right here beside of our trimmer. Not that we need a ruler beside of our trimmer because how many of y'all use your trimmer as your ruler? I know I do. So I'm going to stick that down right about there. And next we need our sewing machine. So we're going to put the sewing machine. I want it to set up. So I'm kind of lining it up with the edge of the card to that piece right there. And I'll bring that up closer so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm lining up the top of the sewing machine right there with the top of that card. So I'm going to put glue just on the bottom part of my sewing machine. This piece right here. And I'm going to stick that down right about like that. And glue is so nice because you can wiggle it and get it in place. Now we're going to do our scissors. Look at these stinking cute scissors. They, when you cut them, they're apart like this. Let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to grab our stamp and pierce mat. This is actually my piercing mat. And that's why I keep one for piercing and one for stamping because I do not want my, I don't want holes in my, my um, stamping one. I'm going to line those up just like that. Where's that take your pick tool? The sharp end, our pick, our picky end. Oh, we've got new accessories coming for the for this. I am so excited about that. If y'all got in your catalog, you might have seen them. Uh, there's three new accessories for it. So um, when I can place a regular order, 
which would be May 2nd. All right, Jennifer, I did forget to put these on there. These are the round and square brads, and these are in our new annual catalog too. Go in and find a little one. If you can find a little black one or a little white one, I used the white one on the ones I used there. I did find a black one, so I'm gonna use a black one. And I'm gonna feed that through and then feed it through the hole that I pierced. And we're gonna put our scissors together. Look at that, they're working scissors now. How stinking cute. And I thought about doing these in foil, but I thought, no, I'm just gonna do them in basic, and this is Smoky Slate, Smoky Slate cardstock. So I'm gonna open them just a hair, and I'm gonna close that brad up where I'm hiding it behind the handle, and mash it down as best you can just like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a glue dot right there in the back of that to help hold everything in place you might even you might want to cut these off you can always cut them if you got some strong scissors or wire snips, you can snip them, and then you don't have to worry about hiding them. Just make sure your scissors don't cut your scissors. <laughs> yeah, you don't want your scissors to cut your scissors, do you? So let me stick those back over there. Now I'm going to take a, a Stampin' Dimensional and put over top of that, and that will help hold them in place. So I want them open about like that, and where's my Dimensionals? Right here. Well, those are the big ones. I need small ones. And I'm going to take one Stampin' Dimensional and just press it in right over top of the, the brad. Just like that. Now we got scissors. So I'm going to open that up. And I am going to set my scissors right here with that glue, with that glue dot behind it. Just like that. Now there's our scissors and our sewing machine. So now what we've got left is our basket and our yarn. So this is so easy to do. Take your basket, bring it up and lay it over top of your yarn. Now you want that little piece of yarn. Let's cut, let's cut this. I'm just gonna go in, I didn't do this on the other card, but I thought, why not? I'm just gonna fussy cut that a little bit so that it can be kind of hanging over. Oh, that's not going to work. All right, we'll do it like that. The string will still look like it's sitting up. That looks good, right? I'm going to take a little tiny bit of glue and I'm going to run it right across the top, very top edge of my basket. And then I'm going to set this down into the glue. Turn it over. And just like that, we've got, let me put these up before I knock them over. Better leave them out, because I gotta, I gotta add those on to my PDF. I don't think I had those on there. Jennifer will let me know, I'm sure. She's probably making notes. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this now, and we're gonna put this right here. I'm gonna pop that up on a dimensional, because it's on the front. Oops, I need a regular size one. And I think I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do one there and one right there. And then we're going to set that basket right about here. I want to make sure that basket is nice and straight. Oh, so cute. It is so cute. Are y'all loving this card? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Rita. I have, I so enjoyed, you know, I saw the idea for this, um, I'll have to, Christ, uh, Christina, um, she did this card, and I love the design of it and the E, so that was not my idea, but I didn't want to do the sailboat one. I wanted to do it with one of the new suites, and I, when I saw this, I thought, oh my goodness, that I got to do it, I got to do it, I just got to. I'm going to take some glue, and I'm going to put glue in a little square right in here and come over a little bit because that piece is about two inches two and a half inches as a matter of fact 
And if we don't get enough of glue, we can always come back. I'm going to flatten it out so I can line this up right to the bottom edge. Get that a good press. And then we're going to turn it over this way. And what I found is I needed that piece right there to go up because if I did it like this, the card would not stand. So, it, but if I do it, oops, I got, it, I got my card going the wrong way. If I, let's bring everything up. See, if I glued it down like this, see how it hits that edge right there? So, what I decided to do was to make that edge part of the easel and just bend that back and put your glue right in here. Or you can put your stamp and seal right here. I'm going to put glue, and I'm just going to put glue like that. And then I'm going to close everything up. I'm going to turn it over and make sure I got everything. Yep, that all looks good. Then I'm going to bring this down and just give it a press, making sure that that piece is folded back because that piece is going to help your card sit. See how it's sitting right there? And there's your card. Now, if you need a place for a sentiment, you've got back here. You could put a circle here. You could put another uh, piece right there and write your um, sign it or whatever. I think this card is so stinking cute. Now I don't know which one I like the best. I don't know if I like the red one. I'm not done. <laughs> I still got some gems to put on this one. So I'm going to grab these uh, iridescent pastel gems. Look how pretty those are. And I used, um, I used some of those on the red card. This one, I'm going to use the blue ones because I think, it, I think it's calling for the blue ones. I also want to grab a piece of linen thread because I, what basket is com not complete without, this looks crooked to me. Eh, it's okay. It's all right. You know, it's handmade, right? What do we say about handmade cards? They're handmade. They're not perfect. They, they were not pulled through on a cutting machine. They were done by hand. So what we're going to do now is tie this into a little bow like so. Tighten it up and then we can adjust our loops because I don't want a big bow. I want a little bow. A little teeny tiny bow. Something like that. And a linen thread I'll cut with these because it's easy to work with. I love linen thread. I think it's so pretty. It just always adds a little something something very discreetly on the front of our card. So I'm going to put that bow right there and I'm going to do it with a glue dot. I'm going to pull a glue dot up with my take your pick tool because I'm rolling it. See I'm rolling that around and around because I want it to be just a tiny little dot of glue right there. You see that? And then I'm going to stick it right on the back of my bow, right where that knot's at. And then I'm going to stick that right here on the front of my card. Just like that. And there is our card. Now we're going to do the gems. And I'm going to grab a big one. You know what? It stuck to my finger better than it did my take your pick tool because I got so much glue on my fingers. I'm going to put one right here in this corner. And I'm going to grab a small one. And put a small one right here. And I think I'm going to grab maybe one of these pink ones, a small one. Come on. You know, if you can't pick them up with the tip of that, on the other end of this is a spatula. And this works really good for, put, for picking up your gems. And I think I'm going to put this one right up. Do I want it under the basket or do I want it? I'm going to put it right here. Okay. 
Okay, um, Jennifer's telling me that she's got two people that has not um, heard back from you whether you want to be in the drawing. We don't like to leave anyone out, so if you can just give us a yay or a nay. Oh, thank you, Phyllis. Wasn't this card fun? Wasn't this just the funnest card ever? And did y'all, can you believe how easy it is to do a sidestep card? Did you ever think you could do a sidestep card this easy? Okay. Yes, definitely, Kathy Kelly. It's handmade, not Hallmark. <laughs> exactly. So if our basket's a little askew, it gives it character, don't you think? <laughs> Yes, it is definitely handmade. It's a handmade hug. I think it turned out stinking cute. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Somebody's going to win this card today. And somebody's going to win this one too. Um, I don't do prizes but once a month. The only reason we did it last week was because I wasn't here on the 7th because I went to Virginia to celebrate Autumn's birthday. So today we're going to give away these two cards. So whoever wants to be in the drawing... Yeah, Marie Phipps and Cynthia Ford. We need to hear from you. We're going to give you all about a couple more minutes while I do a little talking, and then we'll go on without you if we haven't heard. Oh, April, thank you. I didn't, th I didn't know you were still here. <laughs> you stayed with me the entire time. I know. Don't, piecing everything together like that, that, that's what made this so much fun. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, anyone that's here today, you're welcome to be in the drawing. So, just, um, oh, Margie, you're so welcome. But don't leave. Don't nobody leave yet because we got the drawing. And I'm still waiting to hear back from um, Cynthia and, uh, who else was it? Cynthia and, and Marie. So, if y'all are still here, let us know if you want to be in the drawing. Just type in yes or no. I know, I know, Tina. Um, you even even a seasoned crafter. I've made sidestep cards and did them with the trimmer and trimmed everything down. But isn't this the neatest way ever to make one? I love it too. Yeah, there's no crying in crafting. You know what May May says? No crying in crafting. <laughs> so I think I got a T-shirt that says that. So anyway, <laughs> I went to a made it con with May May and. Uh, Tracy and Bill and Edith um, Ray and oh my goodness it was bukus of, of people there and I had so much fun okay all right so uh, we haven't heard we no it's not complicated um April if you want to get into paper crafting stick with me I do easy cards and I do complicated cards I'm going to give y'all a sneak peek at tomorrow's card I've already recorded it it's a sneak peek, so you're only going to see it for a flash. So everybody look. What do you think? Oh, doesn't it look like summer? Okay, that's all you're seeing. That will be on tomorrow's video. <laughs> so, yes, that was a long time ago. Oh, I don't know what y'all are talking about. Oh, a long time ago that you did that card. Yeah. Um, when I saw that you could do it like this and you didn't have to do all of that cutting in between and everything you take a half a sheet of cardstock and you and you do the score lines I mean all we all we do is um, score and anybody can score so okay let's go ahead and get on with our drawing we're gonna give away let's give away the blue card today first because that was the one I made online and everybody always loves the one that I made you know here so we'll do this one for our first drawing and then the red one, the sweet sorbet will be the second one. So, okay. Let's get on with our drawing. I think Jennifer, I don't know if she's ready or not. You never did hear back from um, Cynthia or Marie. Now, M. Pompadour, I, this is the first time I've seen you. Okay, Lori, Jennifer's Jennifer's letting me know. So, M. Pompadour is Lori. Is that is that L O R I or L A U R R I E? Okay, Jennifer's giving me the scoop, y'all. I got her right here in my ear. So we, oh, Marsha, <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Okay, 
let's go ahead. The first one's going to be the blue one. So our winner is Rita Tharp. Congratulations, Rita. And I've got Rita's address, so I don't need her to um, let me know. Once I get your address, you, I got you for life because I put it on my spreadsheet with all of my other addresses. And the second one, Lori. Okay, I got it. All right, and our second winner, Jen. Phyllis, congratulations, Phyllis. Okay, congratulations to both of our winners. How sweet is this? I am so glad y'all enjoyed this, and I hope you didn't mind me keeping y'all over a little bit longer than an hour, but I did do everything from scratch. So, get you're going to need to give me just a few minutes to, um, um, what am I trying to say, to get everything up on, my, on the um, blog. I don't need that. I'm looking for my mouth, y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to get transitioned over to, um, to me. Let's see if I can transition over. There we go. Now I can see y'all. Yes, congratulations to both Rita Tharp and uh, uh, Lala Craft. Phyllis. So thank y'all so, so much. I am. I had so much fun today. Can y'all tell? Hey, I even forgot to put on earrings, and I didn't retouch up my, my lipstick or anything. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Hey, I'm amongst friends, right? Um, Lori, I hope you come back, and um, April, I hope you'll come and join us again, and all of my other regular people. Uh, you know, I couldn't do this without y'all. I would be doing it into the empty cloud if it wasn't for all of you. So, um, I'm so I'm just so thrilled that y'all are here and a part of my channel, a part of my crafty family. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, hop over. Jennifer had the link, I'm sure, in there earlier. Uh, hop over and join there. You'll see inspiration from other crafters that's in our group. It is a private group, so you have to be approved. Um, <laughs> look at that craft room. <laughs> my craft room's a mess right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm hoping y'all are gonna enjoy that card. It's it's very simple, but it was so much fun to make and it was done mostly with dyes. Um I used one set, one one bundle, uh, and it was fun. I did use a couple embossing folders and I used that background. Do y'all remember when I did all of these backgrounds with the alcohol and the ink and the stampin' blends? Y'all remember these? I got a whole little card full of these. I pulled one of these out and I, um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Lori. I'm, I appreciate that. I pulled one of these out for my background on that card and I embossed it with one of my embossing folders and I loved the way it turned out. I'm going to revisit that technique. And uh, so stay tuned. I'm going to be revisiting, and I said this in the video for tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be, be revisiting some of the older things that I have done in the past and hopefully bring put a, a new spin on them. And that's always a good thing. It's a refresher and a new technique and everything. So anyway, God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say, every word that comes from your mouth, every action that you make toward other people, bring glory to Jesus. Jesus did it all for us, and the least we can do is live our life for him. So think about that next time when, before you open your mouth, lose your temper. Let what you do and say bring glory to him. He's worthy. So until we craft again, I love you guys so much. Bye-bye.